My story today is a little bit different. I'm at Precision International in Chesham, which is in Buckinghamshire. Now, so often I go to companies where we're looking at um, production facilities, we're looking at new high-speed machines for manufacturing. Well, today it's all about uh, repair and modifications from this toolmaker here in Chesham. Ian, repair and modifications, um, it's some, sometimes a, a bit of a marketplace that's often overlooked, but it's very appreciated, isn't it? Uh, tell us about your company. Well, here at uh, Precision International, we mainly repair ejection moulds for plastics and modifications. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we do, we don't have any drawings, uh, any, any CAD work. They, they just give us a broken insert and say, can you, can you repair this for us? That's mainly what we do. And that's easy for them, isn't it, to be able to just take a part and say, there you go, C can you fix it? Because what they do, they phone us up, like you might get a phone call on a Saturday morning, can you be here at eight o'clock Monday morning to have a look, we've had a breakdown over the weekend. We're like the emergency services for the plastics industry. Really? Well, well, there was an example of that this morning. We were due to come here earlier on, and you rang me up last night and said, "Can you come a bit later? Because I've got to go and pick up, a, you know, a new job." Or yeah, that was it. I had, somebody had a breakdown last last night, and they they phoned me yesterday evening and said, "Can you come down first thing in the morning? Can you pick up the insert? Uh, can you deal with it?" And this is this is this is the nature of the game that we're in. Three guys here at the company that, yes. that are working. Um, this is a place for skilled engineering, isn't it? Very you, you, much You so. guys are, are very hands-on. You have to be able to work on your own initiative. You have to be able to look at a job and decide how we can we do this, can, the, can we weld this up, do we have to make an insert, can we insert this job? And so you have to work on your own initiative a lot, lot of the time in, in this game. And coming through the doors this morning, I walked around your machine shop and uh, with yourself and saw you know your manual milling machines your, 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 your flatbed manual turning machines your manual spark machines it, it really is a tool making company at the heart of it isn't it a lot, a lot of the jobs we do you can't always use CNC machines because a lot of it is hands-on where you want to nudge a handle here a little bit or just a little tweak a little thou off a here or two you know and I mean we work to very fine tolerances as well on the parts that we do and this machine this is, this is one of your latest purchases. Why was it here? We bought the Joe Mars mainly for the size of the machine and, and the ease of using it. And it's such an easy machine to use. And it gave us, with the size of the tank here, I bought the machine on recommendation. It enhanced our capacity. It made that we can get bigger jobs on there. It really made a big difference to us. And, and when you say it's easy to use though, I mean, it's it, the hardware in itself, essentially the, the machine just goes up and down. And, and you're um, creating your, your recess, you're creating your hole with the sparking um, me mechanics or mechanism. It's the software behind this that really the is the clever. The software behind this is very, very good. The wear rate in these particular machines we find is absolutely excellent for what we use. The surface finishes that come off, even at high power, the wear rate is so good that we find we can get away with two electrodes or one electrode and just redress it back such a small part to do what we want. Because that is spark erosion, isn't it? The, the more ampage you put on, the quicker the part comes yeah, off, but there's it's a compromise. Quicker, it, it, it's the more, yeah, and the bigger spark gap you get as, as well, and, and the wear rate, and I mean, but normally on a lot of the other machines, the higher you amps you put through, the greater the wear rate, but on here, no. It's as good as if you're low, on very fine power as if you're not really on a high power. And the, the program inside of it, it's very, it's very intuitive as well, isn't it? It guides yeah, it, you right the way through. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, so, it's so easy to use. And uh, with the fuzzy logic, I mean, once, once you've sorted your settings out, it just runs. What are you cutting? What are you sparking? What materials? Mainly, we use copper all the time as, a, as, as your electrode. As electro. And, and most of the stuff we use is H13 steel or 2767. We use P20, but it's mainly steel. We don't cut much else on there but we have had instances where we've cut copper to copper when we've used and the, and everything's on the machine for you to do what about the economics of it what about the water the, the filtration making sure that where's the advantages there with this product it, it, it works very well i mean the tank stays goes relatively clean when you're doing a lot of high power you it goes black but it filters very quickly through the machine and it clears itself in, in next to no time. And you've got a lot of other brands in here. Had you heard of Eurospark before it was recommended to you in Joe Mars? No, I didn't. I, I've, I only knew of Eurospark 
on the older machines they had. We had a very old machine of a Euro Spark, but not on the Jomar side. As I said, this was done by recommendation because we wanted this bigger tank and bigger capacity because some of the jobs we were getting were a lot larger and we were struggling to get them on the other machines. And the recommendation was right? The recommendation was perfect.